you kind of don't need to play the ex oh my finger just had the weirdest cramp spasm thing i've ever had in my entire life Oh. Crepes by Radiohead. If you were hoping for a zero bar chord way to play this song, tough. I'm not going to show it to you. There, are, You could use a capo and you could do it without bar chords. Or this, you could take advantage of this great opportunity to perfect the fine and ancient art of playing bar chords on the guitar. Standard tuning. We're in standard tuning. Friends and relatives, you need to be in standard tuning and you need to also... Um, have a pick you don't have to have a pick but i but hey we're playing bar chords playing with a pick playing it the way the radio had intended first chord we need is a bar chord called a g bar chord pointer finger is going to play the third fret on the top string of the top string your ring finger plays the fifth fret on the second string from the top string String, second second string pinky plays fifth fret on the third string from the top middle finger plays fourth fret on the third string from the bottom so again starting from the top string up here we're going three five five four something to keep in mind when you're playing bar chords don't have your thumb up over here over the top like you you technically can play a bar chord with your thumb up over the top but what you want to do is bring your thumb back like this let's get an alternate view see where my thumb is guys see where my thumb is look at that it's like i'm pinching together my thumb and my pointer finger with the guitar in between look see see what i'm saying you see what i'm saying you see what i'm saying you're actually gonna push with your thumb push with your thumb on the neck of the guitar and then your pointer finger is gonna push against your thumb as well all right I'm very upset. It's time for us to take this pointer finger and just smash it down on all the strings. You can see where my finger is, where the tip of my finger is coming up over the top of the guitar. You could do it where you're just right flush with the top of the neck, but I recommend having your finger stuck up a little bit. It might even be easier to have your finger come up even more. You can experiment with different ways there, but I just have, you know, it looks like about a centimeter of my finger sticking up over the top. It just gives me the best leverage. Here's another tip, guys. As you are pushing with your thumb, pushing with your pointer finger, you can also, with your, this, your arm over here, your picking arm, if you push against the body of the guitar, almost like you're trying to break your guitar in half by pushing it against your chest, don't try to break your car your car in half by pushing your guitar against your chest. Hi, my name's Stuart. Like and subscribe if you found this content about breaking your car by pushing on your guitar helpful. I've got other Radiohead tutorials. You can check them out. Um, but uh, what was I saying? I was talking about crushing your guitar. So if you push here and then you're pushing with your hand, pushing with your thumb, now you've got all these different things pushing the strings against your finger, giving you the best chance of getting that nice, crisp, clear bar chord sound another thing to be very aware of make sure the tips of your fingers are right up against the frets don't let them go to the middle of the fret you're gonna start getting this sound i don't want that sound do you want that sound get them right up against the edge and then it should sound a little something like this guys it sounds like the first chord to creep by radiohead yeah, I know I'm spending a lot of time talking about this one chord, but that's because there's only four chords in this song, so, and they're pretty much all the same chord. So if you get good at this one, then you're good at all of them. God. G major bar chord. Welcome to Crepes by Radiohead. Remember when I said that? That was pretty funny. Crepe is like a breakfast dessert, not a song. So... This is a G major chord. Go ahead, for right now, we're just gonna strum it. Oh, that sounds great, guys. Such a good job. And then, you're gonna take this very same chord shape. This is what we, in the, the, uh, the guitar industry, we call this the E bar chord shape. The reason why is because these fingers here are making the shape of an E chord. An E chord, and you just scooch it up, add your pointer finger, G bar chord. Oh, so much fun. You're gonna take this E bar chord shape, and you're gonna move it one, two, three, 
four frets up the neck of the guitar. So now your pointer finger is on seven on all six strings. Ring finger is on nine. Pinky is on nine. And middle finger is on eight. Pointer finger is gonna smash down. Do all those things, remember? Where's your thumb? Is it, oh, I hit the microphone, I'm sorry. Is your thumb, what is this? Huh, that's the best way to do that. See where my thumb is? That's right there. And maybe I'll do my little push on the guitar here. I'm pushing with my fingers. Got everything going. Oh, if it doesn't sound quite right, maybe I'll just kind of move this around a little bit, try to get it just right. Oh, this is a B major bar chord, guys. G major going to B major. What do you say we practice those two chords? We're just gonna strum each one. We're gonna count to four in between each chord. One, two, here we go. And one, two, three, here we go. And one, two, let's go back to the other one. Here we go. One, two, three, up to the B. Oh, three. Four. Up to the B, up to the B. Whatever happened to that? I don't remember the name of that person, the song. Hi. Did I already say subscribe? Whenever I say something that is a complete waste of time, that's when I feel inspired to say, oh, subscribe to the channel, guys. Take the same chord. Move it one fret over. So now we're on 10. No, wait, sorry. Now we're on eight with the pointer finger, 10 with the ring finger and pinky, and nine with the middle finger. This is a C bar chord. But Uncle Stewart, why am I playing a C? Couldn't I do it over here? Yeah, sure, this is a C. You could do it there. But two things. One, it's not how Radiohead does it. It doesn't sound quite right. Two, do you want to get good at bar chords or not? I feel like when people, like when like, when I was a kid and people were saying I needed to learn how to drive stick shift, a stick shift car, and I'm like, I don't want to. Guess what? I never did it. Has never affected me ever. I say you got to learn bar chords. You know what? You could do fine not learning bar chords. Who am I to tell you that you have to drive a bar chord car. I feel like I've been awake for six weeks. B bar chord. No, shoot, I messed up. G bar chord on the third fret. B bar chord on the seventh fret. C bar chord on the eighth fret. When I say what fret, I'm talking about what fret my pointer finger's on. And then one more chord, and that's literally the only chords in this song, is we need to learn a C minor bar chord. Here's how you do that. You have your C bar chord here ready to go. You're going to get rid of your middle finger, just your middle finger. This is now a C minor bar chord, but wait, there's more. If you take your middle finger and smash down onto your pointer finger, now you have the strength of two fingers smashing down on that eighth fret, which makes the bar chord so much easier, it's, which is good because this minor bar chord, the hardest note in this chord is the third string from the bottom. Go ahead and play the third string from the bottom for me. Does it sound like this? Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. That means you're gonna need to push harder because we want it to sound like that. Now you can just push harder with your pointer finger and your middle finger. Another thing you can do is when you switch to the minor bar chord, you can take these fingers and move them up even more and try to get your knuckle of that finger lined up with that third string from the bottom. That's what I do. So if I'm playing the C, you see where my pointer finger is. Then when I switch to the C minor, watch this. Oh, you see how I have nudged everything up a little bit? And then that note sounds crystal clear. All right, we've learned the, the main chords. We're gonna play through those. We're gonna practice them. That's where most of the work is gonna be, is just learning those chords. But we are gonna talk about the picking. We are gonna talk a little bit about strumming. We're gonna talk about a couple other little air variations, but those are the only actual chords in the song. What do you say we play them through one single solitary time? One, two, get the G chord ready. One, two, Three, stay there and get ready. Switch to the seventh fret. Here we go. B chord. Two, three, four, five, six. Just up one fret. And one, two, that's the C. Isn't it nice? C minor, here we go. Oh, C minor chord. And then it just starts over again. And that's how you play the main chords to Creeps by Radioheads. Let's do the picking, the picking. So here's what I have to say about the picking for this song. They do not stick to an exact pattern with the picking for this song. They're kind of, they're going like this. They're going. Mm. 
and I've listened to a bunch of live recordings. I don't need to brag or anything, but I've seen Radiohead live like three times, and I like paid attention. And one of the, wait, they actually they usually don't play this song live, but when I saw them. They played it live and it was a special event and it was very, very exciting. Very exciting times, guys. I mean, you know, I'm cool about that because I saw Radiohead play Creep. Am I a hero because I saw Radiohead play Creep? That's not for me to decide. But the point I'm making is that they change it up. They don't play the same picking pattern. So what I'm going to show you right now, though, is I'm going to show you what they play note for note exactly the first time through the chords. I recommend you just practice that exact pattern so you get the right technique, then as you get more comfortable with it, you can kinda, you might you might switch up some of the notes, you'll just get a feel for it, you can do some stuff, it's gonna be great. Get the first chord ready, that G major chord. Here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna play the top string with your pick. Then you're gonna play the second string. Then you're gonna play the third string from the top, but if at all possible, I would like you to pick up on that third string from the top. So it's down, down, up. Down, down, up, down, down, up. Great job. Then you're gonna go back to the second string from the top and pluck down. So now we've got down, down, up, down. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up, down. So good. Now you're going to play the third string from the top again, plucking down this time. Then you're gonna play the third string from the bottom, plucking up. So that was down, down, up, down, down, up. Can we, let's try it one more time. Let's, I know, let's, yeah, yeah. One, two, here we go. And down, down, up, down, down, up. The reason I am changing the direction of my picking is because I am always trying to pick in the direction of the next string I'm going to play. You call that directional picking. It's something that you don't really need to think about. It just starts happening automatically, but you have to put a little bit of effort to into it at first. So you don't have to focus on this for the whole song. If you just plug down on everything, that's okay. It still sounds fine. Don't worry about it. But if you're feeling ambitious, feeling like developing a new important skill in this stage in your life, you can go down, down, up, down, down, up. Okay, I'm gonna stop calling out the directions now, okay? We just played that third string from the bottom. At this point in time, what's going to happen is there's a tiny little half beat little breath where you just get to wait for a second. And then you're gonna play the third string from the top again. And then you're gonna jump to the second string from the bottom. So here's what we just did, we did. Sounds pretty good. Let's do it together. One, two, three, four. So nice. Okay, okay. Let's take it from there. We just played that second string from the bottom. Then you're gonna play third string from the bottom. Then fourth string from the bottom. Then back to the third string from the bottom. So that was. How's your hand doing over here? Is your thumb falling off? Probably, your thumb is probably about ready to fall off. It hurts. It's actually not a sensation like it's gonna fall off. That's the, it's just the expression we use when our thumb hurts. Okay, we just went. Then there's another little pause, a little half beat, a little break. It's actually kind of a full beat break this time. We really get a chance to take a, take a little breath. And then you're gonna play second string from the bottom, then third string from the top. So bang, bong, sounds like this. How'd you do? Now, I know what you're thinking. Uncle Stuart, I can't remember all these all these different strings. How am I supposed to keep track of exactly what string I'm supposed to play in that order exactly? Yeah, that's kind of the point I was making earlier. You kind of don't need to play the ex Oh, my finger just had the weirdest cramp spasm thing I've ever had in my entire life. Oh. What happened? I need more electric lights. If you play the wrong string, it's okay because all of the strings sound good. Even if you change up the rhythm and, and all of that sort of stuff, as long as you're feeling the beat of the song, it's gonna be okay. 
vague, I know, it's vague. Those are the vague instructions. I'm showing you the specific thing. Try to do the specific thing, but if you kind of start going into that vague, make stuff up direction, it's okay as long as it sounds good to you. All right. Now we're done with the G chord. Moving up to the B chord. That was the one up on the seventh fret. We're gonna go like this. This bit, I like this part. This part we have a little fancy little thing we're gonna do is great. I think I just kicked the camera ever so slightly. We're gonna be okay. You're gonna play the top string. Then you're gonna play the second string from the top. Then you're gonna jump down to the third string from the bottom. So that was top, second from the top, third from the bottom. Then go back to the second from the top. So one, two, three, four, then third string from the top, and then third string from the bottom, and then back to second string from the top. That was a lot, listen to this. Let's do it again, one, two, here we go. That part's actually not too bad to play, it's kind of fun, okay. Then here's where the fancy things comes in. Here is where the fancy thing happens. Take your pinky and move it one string down like that. So see how I just took my pinky, it went boop like that. You're gonna play that string, the third string from the bottom, then immediately go to the second string from the top, then put your pinky back and play the third string from the bottom again. So that was like this. There's a little teeny little breath in there. We go. And then three more notes. You're gonna play second from the top, third from the bottom, third from the top. So that was pinky, regular, second, uh, uh. So everything we just did on the B chord was like this. Do you like it? Do you like it? I did it just for you. You're gonna love this next part. We take that B chord, we move it up to the C. Remember the C chord with a pointer finger on the eighth fret? We are going to do that exact same pattern we just did on the B chord on this C chord. So that means it's gonna go like this. So we got on the B. C. You're getting the hang of it, guys. Finally, it's time for the C minor. Get the C minor chord ready to go. We're gonna go like this. Second string from the top, then jump down to the third string from the bottom. This is the note that might sound like that. Here's another, I, to, I would like to make a deal with you. Would you make a deal with me? If your minor chord does not sound good right away, what I would like you to do is just play the notes, play the strings with it not sounding very good and get used to that. And as time goes on, the notes will sound better and better. So that means your minor chord might sound like this. That's okay for right now. You're just gonna have to live with it. If you sit there and obsess over getting every note to sound good, I mean, you can do that every once in a while, but mostly you just wanna be able to keep playing the song and just, and just trust that it's gonna get easier. Okay, so second string from the top, then you're gonna play a third string from the bottom, then third from the top, then second from the bottom. So that was... Here, look at my pick, look at this. I'm going, oh, it's hard to see. Here we go. Okay, then you're gonna do third from the bottom and just go up, up, up like this. And then go to the third from the top. So it was. We try all those notes together. One, two, here we go. Okay, okay, almost done. Second string from the top again. Third string from the bottom, up to the next one, third from the top, second from the top, and then you're just gonna go again. So we're just doing those three strings a bunch of times. It goes. That 
that's the picking for the verse, you guys. Let's play the whole verse all the way through once. Give your thumb a second. If you do not play all of the exact same notes that I play, that's okay. That's how Radiohead does it. I mean, in the recording, they play it like this. But when they're just playing the song, they don't always play the same notes. That's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. I've tried to make that point so many times. You guys understand it, but I haven't accepted that you understand it yet. Oh, my frame rate's getting a little weird. I think it's because my battery's dying. One and two and one, two. Here's the verse. Should we talk about the chorus? The verse, they just do that over and over and over and over and over and over. The chorus, a couple things happen in the chorus. We've got the same basic chords, but what we are going to do is switch them to power chords. What We are not going to play 100% the uh, Johnny Greenwood, Green River, Green Green River Killer. The, the Johnny, Johnny Greenwood, Wood, Wood Green. And the other guy whose name is like Damon Macintosh. That's not his name. I, considering Radiohead's one of my favorite bands, I really should know the names of the members. Oh well. I know there's brothers. Colin is one of them, but not the one I'm talking about. Hi, my name's Stuart. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. Good like and subscribe for the third time. All right. At this point in time, let's uh, let's do the right before the chorus. Right before the chorus happens, there's those. So the way that you can do it on acoustic guitar, I'm doing it on acoustic guitar right now, but if you're on like a super distorted electric guitar, it sounds even better. What you're gonna do is you are going to, with your entire hand, all of your fingers, you're going to just kind of fan them out. You're gonna touch all of the strings. Do it over here, like over on the first, second, and third frets. Don't do it up here, because then it'll start sounding, you'll start getting some notes. If you're over here, it's just gonna sound really muffled and beefy. Do not push. If you push at all, it's gonna sound like that. You just wanna touch the strings. If it sounds like this, that means even though you're pushing, I mean, you're just touching lightly with most of your fingers, it means the base of your fingers is just coming down a little bit too hard on the bottom string. So just make sure you're just lightly touching. You're gonna go like this. You're gonna go one, two, down up, like that, super hard, one, two, down up, down up, down up. He does it three times. So let's do that one more time. It's one, two, down up, down up, down up. He does it like, I think guys, I think it might be for show a little bit. I don't think he has to hit the strings with literally all of his shoulder strength, but, but that's what he does. And uh, you know what? And then he did the soundtrack to There Will Be Blood, which was a, which was a fantastic movie. It's a movie with not much talking. Just a lot of people being depressed and miserable. My, that's my kind of thing. For the chorus, we're just gonna go like this. We're just, it's, here's what it is. It's those bar chords, but we don't need to bar. I'm just doing third fret on the top string, fifth fret, second string from the top, fifth fret, third string from the top. My pointer finger is not smashing down on all the strings. It's just touching those bottom strings to mute them. And I go two, three, Four, it's much easier. A break for my fingers, and you go up to seven. Two, three, four, five, six. Then up to eight. Two, three, four, then eight again. And two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Also, they don't do this on the recording, but there's so much stuff happening with the recording with the two guitars and extra stuff. If you want to add a little bit more beef to it, if you're playing by yourself, just strum eighth notes on the guitar. What I mean by that is instead of doing one strum per chord, go. And here's another thing you can do. For that last chord, we can kind of mix the two guitar parts into one. And instead of just staying on that eighth fret power chord, what you can do is bring your pointer finger up to 11 
on the top string, have your pointer finger just lay flat and have it mute the second string from the top. Then play 13 on the third string from the top. What we're doing here is, what that is, is that's the minor third of our C minor chord, which just basically we get that C minor sound without having to play a whole C minor chord. So that's the chorus. Uh, so we're not learning the solo because I'm allergic to guitar solos, unfortunately. Um, so that was just like the verse is the quiet little picking. The chorus is the big old strumming. Also, if you wanted to sing and play the song at the same time and it's tough for you to do that picking and sing, you can also just strum the bar chords, guys. You can go. It sounds nice. Just be nice and gentle with it. And then when you get to the chorus, you just go like that. And, you know, so this is my pick. And, uh, um... 